What up, y'all? Today is November 1st. That means it's time to take a look into the second chapter of the uh, comic reviews with the Amazing Jucker Brothers. This came out in September of 1999. It was released a short few months after the actual album came out. And it's going to give you like a backstory on the Amazing Jucker Brothers. And then it's going to dive right in and build back onto the plot line that becomes the pendulum. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look. There's the front cover. So we'll go ahead and pop it open and take a look on the inside. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through and tell you what's going on and keep it in a nutshell. That way, if you ever decide to pick these comics up, I'm not completely ruining it for you. You're going to still have a great time reading. And I'm just going to kind of shove everything into a nutshell. What it's going to do is it's just building up a uh, building up a story here, setting the scene. What you got is a diner here, Lula's uh, Diner. And basically you got some guys that come barging in. And they're talking about a reporter that they killed who was doing some reports on some illegal Mexican uh, trafficking, human trafficking, basically. And as you can see right here, you got this guy named Jasper who is basically a slave to the diner owner. So you got the two guys come in, they're talking about it and everything like that. And the sheriff, there's a sheriff in here who actually had his brother killed by the Wicked Clowns, which we haven't seen yet. So this is kind of a... Uh, a prologue of what's going to come so they're in there talking about it and Jasper sees out the window that there's some clowns coming which of course are our boys Shags and Jay and you know they come in and they kind of keep everything cool like you know just want to get a cool fago and all that shit and basically between the two guys that went and killed the reporter and Violent Jay and Shaggy you know there's words exchanged shit talking and all that and the scene kind of escalates and it uh, starts turning into a brawl and they just start fucking killing people which is what they went there for because who they went out they're actually there to kill the sheriff because they later in the comic they're actually going to kill his brother and then they're going to go it'll make sense towards the end I'm not even sure how to fucking make the connection without getting to the end so let's just keep going through just all kinds of mayhem and blood gore guts shit flying everywhere and uh this is where we introduce the amazing jekyll brothers right here through the brawl then the sheriff pulls out his guns get ready to shoot what's it jay's get ready to shoot jay so jay takes the joker card throws it at him and sticks it right in his forehead and then we have the emergence of the amazing jekyll brothers now this i might actually go ahead and pick up and kind of read to you right here well I'll just give you an overview but I gotta kinda pull it close so I can fucking read it because I have shitty eyesight says once more emerging from the depths of the dark carnival like phantom smoke drifting into the minds of men come the amazing Jekyll brothers Jake the just Jack the sinister says the price of admission to their show is a mere mortal mortal soul Dead souls take on the form of red juggling balls soaked in blood and beating like an erratic living heart. There is no escape from the Jekyll Brothers' juggling act, for there is no escape from ourselves. Jack Jekyll will throw the balls very fast. He will often throw a curve to try to fool his brother. Jake Jekyll will try to keep the orbs in the air long, as long as he can. But for, everything, for, but for every sin committed in the mortal's life, the ball becomes heavier. It gets harder and harder for Jake to keep such a ball airborne. So basically everybody that was in the room now have all become orbs. And, you know, they got the juggling act going on. And eventually, Jake Jekyll fumbles from the weight of sin-heavy orbs. A pit of infinite evil opens and the soul is cast into an eternity of pain and suffering. I'm just going to show Jasper here. Jasper's not evil. He's good. A soul without evil, however, as a light, is oh, is a light and floating thing. Okay. Or you think they'd say orb. A pure soul opens the gates to Shangri-La and grants one ascension into pure enlightenment and peace. See, there he is. He's all peaceful and shit. Jack and Jake Jekyll rest in all of us, for they are the very fabric of our being, conscience, and soul. Only in death will we realize this as we twist and spin uncontrollably to the other side. 
The Amazing Jekyll Brothers are the fifth Joker's card of the coming Dark Carnival. The Amazing Jekyll Brothers join the four cards that have come before. The Carnival of Carnage, the Ringmaster, the Riddle Box, the Great Malenko. The sixth card remains hidden when it is revealed that time itself will crumble all and all will be judged. Blech. The Joker cards are entrusted to the Prophets of the Dark Carnival, the Wicked Clowns, a.k.a. the Insane Clown Posse. Flashback three months, the Amazing Joker Brothers card is first revealed. Now we got these guys, now we got Jane Shags driving in a car. They come up on a semi and he's talking about, oh, we got one of these road rage fools and he's talking about how he's going to swerve and knock him off the road and shit like that. So you got him driving and they're basically talking shit like, don't make me come up there and fucking kill you, shit like that. But then as they get further down the road, you got this guy down here with a sniper rifle. And he was actually hired by Little D, which was Big D's little brother from the first comic that we read. And he was sent to kill the clowns for killing his brother. But instead he misses and shoots the truck driver, as you can see there. So causing him to swerve and they crash. And fucking Shags gets impaled badly. And that was uh, up here then. He's saying, you know, the job's done, all that good shit. I'm fucking my background up, scooting this around. So then they're called upon by the Dark Carnival, who is basically saying that it's time for... The Amazing Jekyll Brothers to emerge and saying that they will help them in their journey. And now, still three months ago, prior to what we've seen at the beginning, now they're in Florida. And there's a meeting being held at an amusement park, which is being held by... Uh, who the fuck is it? Oh, yeah, Little D. Duh. Pay attention here. So, you know, he's going on about he's got different guys there, and they're in a helicopter, and he throws one of the guys that was working with his brother and let the clowns come in and kill him. So he gets thrown out of the helicopter down into the fucking pool, lake, whatever. You know, belly flopping's never fun. And then you got Jay and Shags who show up. And this is actually pretty cool right here what they did. This is actually like the little skit at the end of... Fuck, I want to say it was Southwest Song off of Ringmaster. You know, the little boy, he's all like, uh, Daddy, Daddy, look, clowns, make them do something funny. Well, he didn't say that in skit. It's only Jay that's there. Look, a clown, make them do something funny, please, please. You know, that whole skit. So they kind of put that in a little comic skit, which is fucking awesome. Then inside one of the little theaters, you got people gathering around, getting ready to watch a show. And then right here, you got Shaggy. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, Millennium Wolf World, the slimiest place on earth, presents for your entertainment the musical stylings of the insane clown posse in a little number we like to call the toy box. And it goes into like a music video style thing, which is actually really fucking awesome. I love that they did this. So, and it's, it's actually got the lyrics posted on here. Which you can't help but just have that song play in your head as you read this. Right there, you got a slinky going around slinging everybody around. Only one likes to, likes to wrap around your face, then stretch, twist, kazoom. So basically, everybody gets slaughtered in that manner. There's the rubber ducky. It's not every day that you get your forehead split. And then they, uh, they leave. That was the bomb. Now we got one more bitch to fry. Now remember the sniper that took out the truck driver? They go to his house. This is the epilogue. A few hours later in New York City, he's watching TV. He thinks he killed the clowns. And the news reporter is saying, And to recap our top story, several prominent people were killed today at Millennium Wolf World Amusement Park. That's kind of a tongue twister. Including CEO Little D. The assailants witnessed the assailants witnesses report were dressed like evil clowns. What? I don't believe it. We have an exclusive surveillance photo of this alleged of the alleged killers, but it's very fuzzy and you might have to get close up to your screen to make anything out. That's right, get up real good and close. Salam come out and fucking kill the bitch. So there you go. And then what the guy is saying as he's getting dragged out, he says, You won't get away with this. My brother's a very powerful man. He'll pay you back. You'll see. 
and then they show a picture and there's the fucking sheriff right there and they say not if we see him first so that's what happened at the beginning they went and killed the sheriff and it kind of it, it, more or less it leaves it at a place with no loose ends to where they could have ended it there but fuck they ain't gonna man this shit is the shit they're gonna keep this door going so then you just got a couple ads in here including a poster here and of course the newsletter which is a good read definitely good read you know, it's got some kind of historic shit in there and you got your advertisements in here action figures big money hustlers and then of course an ad for the album itself so there you guys go this actual the actually this comic isn't that hard to find I think hell I picked up uh, I picked this up with the other two that goes with it I think it was around 15 bucks you might even be able to find it cheaper on eBay I'm not sure but there you guys go. There's the Amazing Chuckle Brothers. I will see you guys next month when we take a look at the Rays of the Desert's Glass. Or I might have fucked that title up. But you know what I'm talking about. I'll see you guys on December 1st. Thanks for watching. Peace.